Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to do a cicada pattern. It's actually a combination of a number of patterns that um, that I've seen. Um, namely, uh, there's a pattern by Davy McPhail um, that's that's quite a good cicada pattern, very similar to, to this. I've just changed some of the materials and the way I do the deer hair. Um, but basically, that's what they look like. Um, hopefully you can see those so basically it is tied on a jig hook um, in this particular case this is a um, a size number two ec413 60 degree jig hook but any 60 degree jig hook i'm sure will suffice the body um, is spun deer hair uh, then you've got the eyes which is a foam tube so just um, a little bit of foam tube like that um, and then the um, carapace is a sh piece of two mil sheet foam. Uh, just this is in, in black. The wings are one of the things I do differently. In Davy McPhail's pattern, he uses um, a couple of Coq de Leon um, feathers, uh, which is fine. I just find that the feathers um, uh, are fairly easy to break. Uh, this is a synthetic, it's uh, kinky fiber. Uh, just with a little bit of crystal flash uh, through it uh, and then the legs uh, again are different uh, just um, silly legs uh, and it's just one at each side and then I'll show you how, how I tie those in um, the idea of the jig hook is to allow us to tie the eyes in and then pull the foam back over the top if you did it on a normal hook you'd have to um, somehow get the eyes on and be able to pull the foam back so so that's the idea behind that pattern. So um, fr from the water, um, that's what it'll look like underneath. All right, we'll get started. All right, so let me run through the materials very quickly again. First of all, obviously, deer hair. Deer is, is the thing. Uh, a little bit of dubbing. In this case, I'm using uh, Wicked Black Ice Dub. Um, the slinky fiber with a little bit of crystal flash through it, as you can see there. Uh, the silly legs, so in this case black, you can also do these in olive. A uh, piece of 2 mil foam and that's probably just under a centimetre wide. Um, and then at one end I've, um, I've cut it to a taper which becomes the, uh, the carapace for the cicada. And then that's just um, a foam cylinder. Uh, so for those trouties out there, um, when you do uh, boobies, that's the sort of stuff that you're using for the eyes of the booby. All right, <clears throat> so the way I'm going to tie this, I'm going to start off and show you this, the deer hair and how it's spun. Uh, then I'll stop because what I find easier is actually trimming it out of the vise. Um, so I'll trim it. I will explain how I trim it. Um, and then we come back and, and do the rest of the fly. So let's just start off. Um, with the deer hair. Now the tail is going to be tied differently um, as I'll show you to the rest of the deer hair. So I'm just taking a small clump of deer hair and I'm using these tips to help form the tail because they'll come together into a nice um, uh, you know taper at the end. So I'm putting it like that just past the bend of the hook uh, and then I am doing some fairly loose wraps to start, all right, and then pulling it tight and winding the thread through it a little bit, which is this, and then just pulling the deer head down and back, so away from the top of the hook and down and back. So that's going to preserve my tail for me. All right, so that's the, the key thing there. Uh, <clears throat> Now we just wind the thread back towards that deer hair to stop it creeping forward. Now it's not vital for this pattern to pack the deer hair particularly tight. Um, you know, if you were doing a Dahlberg or something like that where you're relying on the deer hair uh, to float the fly and nothing else, uh, then yes, you need to pack it fairly tight. Uh, for this one, of course, you've got both the deer hair and the foam at the front. Uh, the foam has probably got enough buoyancy to, to hold the fly up by itself. Alright, so another small clump of deer hair. And I'm basically putting that on so that the thread's about halfway through the deer hair. A couple of loose wraps. 
spin it around the hook as much as you can and then pull tight and again we're just going to wrap the thread through the deer hair like that this one you can just pull straight back all right we want a bit of body on the top and we want some on the on the bottom so that's why i'm doing it that way all right we just tie that off you can see bits of deer hair there all right and then we just do the same again So when I cut the deer hair, I pull all the little, you'll see little hairs and stuff in it. Try and pull those out. It just makes it cleaner and the deer hair does stack a lot better. A couple of loose wraps, spin it around the hook, pull it tight. All right. Pull it back. Use your fingers to push it back onto itself so it is packing a little bit. Bring your thread back up and a couple of... Uh, wraps there just to stop the deer hair coming forward like that all right i'm going to pause here and what i'm basically going to do is just continue doing those steps up to about that point all right on the hook so i want you know maybe five three to five mils back from the bend of the uh, jig hook here um, and that's where we're going to tie in the wings the eyes and then that foam all right so i'll pause here and we'll come back. Okay, so I'm where I want to basically finish now. All right, so the next step obviously is going to be to cut that deer hair to the shape. So I'm going to do a couple of whip finishes here just to um, be able to take this thread off because it's far easier to cut the deer hair with no thread on. All right. And I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue there just to stop that coming undone and stop the deer hair coming forward. <clears throat> now, cutting. Um, as I said, I like I prefer to take it out of the vise. Some people like to do it in the vise. The problem with doing it in the vise, of course, you're going to have little bits of deer hair flying all over the place. Now, I'm going to start on the underneath side and basically I'm coming in on an angle down towards where the bend in the hook is all right and basically i'll be doing that same thing the whole way around the fly all right do smaller cuts so you get that and then start doing your smaller cuts don't try and do really big cuts and think you're going to do uh get the thing done really quickly take your time and basically the shape you want if you look at this particular one from the back you can see it's a, um, an oval shaped body with a taper from the front to the back and then you've got a little bit of deer hair here to, to form that point that cicadas have at the back that's where basically where we're going to trim to so again i'll pause here i'll cut and then i'll come back okay so now i'm back <clears throat> you can see how i've trimmed it so tapered towards the back left the point with those um skinny pieces of tapered deer hair there at the back uh, relatively flat on the bottom it's important to make sure that's um you know reasonably flat and opens the gape of the hook otherwise you're not going to get consistent hookups all right so that's that so that's the deer hair part that's probably one of the you know probably the most difficult part of, of this fly so now i'm going to start the thread again and I'm, as i said i'm just using a 6-0 thread um, and I'm going to wind that back towards the deer hair. And what I have here is slinky fibre. Uh, it's got a little bit of flash through it, so similar to the Deadly Dazzle. Um, and then this is uh, just a little bit of pearl crystal flash through the top, um, just to give it a little bit of flash, like the ref you know sun reflecting off a translucent or transparent wing from a cicada. So what we do is we measure that up so that the wing end is just past the body of the cicada. All right, so then we get that and we tie that in and that goes to one side, tie it back towards the deer hair. Now it's going to stick out, that's okay because when we put the carapace on uh, that will rectify that. Take the second piece and measure it against the first bring that across to the other side and then we tie that down all right like so try and get make sure they're relatively well separated 
cut off the excess there and at this point I am going to put a little bit of super glue or headset whatever you prefer to use just a touch there and that'll stop those wings falling out all right, so what we do now is we just tidy that up a little bit. Now the fly is going to swim um, hook point down, regardless of the fact that it's a jig hook. The reason is there is no weight at the top of the jig hook on the, the shank of the hook uh, to make it flip over. So it will swim this way up in case people were wondering why I'm putting the wings there. All right, the next thing is to tie in the tube, um, the, the foam cylinder, which becomes the eyes. So we just put that right on the bend of the hook down towards the eye of the 60 degree. And we'll just tie that on, try and get it relatively even, and then do the other side. So same as you would for a set of dumbbell eyes. Um, except these are foam so not quite as easy as it looks um, get that out of the road there we go. All right, so once you're happy that you've got those relatively even and relatively level move the thread behind the eyes All right. get those nice and straight <coughs> And then again, I'm going to spin this over and I'm going to hit it with some super glue on the bottom threads because that should also help us stop those eyes spinning around the hook because it is really hard to get good purchase on the cylinder without actually snapping the cylinder. So just be careful of that. I'll right, we'll just give that a second to set and that should be pretty good. I will put a little bit of super glue here on the top as well just to protect that thread all right and then we're going to take the foam strip so that's this um, and what we want to do is we want to measure so that we've got a reasonable amount of carapace coming back over the wings which will help push the wings down um, and then you know come forward and then what I usually do is I get a, a bodkin needle um get one here yep all right and just what roughly where i want it like so i'm going to push that needle through through the foam all right and then just sort of move it around widen up the hole a little bit make it a little bit easier for it to slip over the um the eyes now the thread needs to be right back here near the wings okay when we do this that's important okay slip that over the hook eye pull that down so if you look you've I've got it over the eyes coming back over the wing then I am going to pull that down with the thread give it a reasonable amount of tension okay make sure your eyes haven't moved now you can see that's tied down now you can see the wings have flattened out and you've got that carapace shell there. All right, so then we flip it over, we pull this piece of foam back, and we try to pull it back with a little bit of tension on it. All right, and then same thing. We're gonna put wraps and then tighten it up. Okay, so that's that. That's tied in. We then cut just a couple of mils past the thread and we cut it on a slight angle so that that's not sticking up too much it sort of blends in a little bit to the to the deer hair all right so we'll bring that back over make sure everything's good so you can see the shape starting to happen there all right and then the next thing is just the legs all right so the legs as i said just black silly legs what i do is bring the tips together now try and do this in front of the vise. So I bring the tips together like so. Turn the fly on its side. So I want the front legs to be about that long. So I grab the legs, pull it in under the thread, 
one, two wraps, that holds it. Now I've got a loop at the back, I leave that until I've done the other side. So same thing again, we get legs, tips together, work out how long we want the front legs to be, so about there, up under the thread, it's probably too long, just pull them back a touch, alright, so there we go, a couple of wraps there, alright, so we'll just leave those back legs for a second, we'll check it, looks pretty good, now, this is where the dubbing comes in. So as I said before, wicked black eye stub. And I'm just going to make a small bit of dubbing on the thread. And what this is to do is it does two things. Hides the thread a little bit <clears throat> at the back of the fly here, but also helps keep the legs that little bit further apart. So you don't have the back legs crossing over onto the front legs. So that's that. So if you have a look, you can just see the dubbing there. Gives a little bit of flash too, which it doesn't it doesn't really have that much of. Once you've done that, whip finish over where you just dubbed and make sure you don't catch any legs like I just did then. Alright. Once you're happy, pull that tight. Cut that off. Alright. Now, important step. Before you do anything else is make sure that's all straight. Once you're happy with all of that, hit the super glue onto the that thread you just did, or your whip finish, and onto the dubbing that'll soak into the dubbing and it will hold it all together. All right. Now these legs at the back. <coughs> do these ones probably the easiest. Get your scissors into the loop, pull it tight, cut. And that way you know you've got an even cut. Same on this side, cut. All right, pretty even. Now you can leave them that long. I don't have an issue with that. It gives it a lot more movement. Or you can cut them a little bit shorter. And to do that, all I do is just pull these up through to the middle of the fly. Hold the tips roughly where I reckon I want to cut and then just hit that and now you've got slightly short, shorter legs that are just shorter than the wing and that's how I leave it. Alright, there it is. Any runaway or fly away fibres you can just pull out but um, you, you know it's got the wings which will go really translucent when they're wet using that slinky fibre. It's, it's um, just the natural colour slinky fibre that I use. Um, the eyes stick out both from underneath in terms of looking like cicada eyes, but the reason I use the bright colours um, is also so you can see the fly when you've cast it up into the shadows. You've got the bright colour to um, to see where the fly's at. But if you know, if looking at it from underneath, it really does look like just a stranded cicada. You know, you've got lots of movement in those legs every time you strip it, and the wings as well. So that's it, guys. Hope you enjoy that. Take it easy.